It's Mo. It's the end of July, and I've started reading my next book for the TBR Spin. The TBR Spin is a super fun booktube game where the hosts of the game, Jill from the Book Bully and Sarah from Freshly Read Books, have incorporated elements from other booktube games, created a wheel with prompts, and you pick 12 books at the start of the year. Each month they spin the wheel, and we select a book from our 12 books based on that prompt. Sometimes the wheel asks you to swap out books, sometimes it gives you a bigger challenge, sometimes there are guest hosts that gives you a different challenge as well, but more often than not it's just using a prompt to interpret which book you're going to read off your stack. So we are now in July. After we read our July book we only have one, two, three, four, five books left. Once a prompt is used it's removed from the wheel so you can never get the same prompt twice. I vlog every book that I read for TBR Spin, and at the end of each vlog I watch the next month's prompt pick my book. So at the end of this vlog you can see what my book will be for August. My book for July was The Secret of Nim by Robert C. O'Brien. This is a Newbery Medal Award winner and also a middle grade book. It was written in the 80s. It was written in 1982. It was famously made into a animated movie. I'm sure that any of you watching who grew up in the 80s or before will remember, and I was really interested to read it. I had been talking about it with my husband a few months ago, and then we found it at a little free library. I couldn't remember the movie except that parts of it really scared me, but it was high in my mind like The Last Unicorn and The Hobbit and other kind of scary but awesome 80s animated movies like that. I really really wanted to read it and see what the book was about. I'm sure that I was read this book as a child, but I really don't remember it that well. And I'm about halfway through, a little less than halfway through now, and it's definitely not going the way that I expected it to go. I remembered very little about this. All I remembered was that the main story follows a mouse mom named Mrs. Frisbee and that she had mouse kids and that she went on adventures and that she met up with various other animals like the rats of Nim. But I only remember the rats being scary, I only remember it being kind of a harrowing tale, but of course Miss Frisbee is like smarter than she thinks she is and is integral in saving the day. The story does start out with Mrs. Frisbee. We learn that she lives on a farm, she lives in a house that's in a field. She's going to have to move herself and her four children children after the last frost because the farmer is going to start to plow the fields and their house is not going to survive that plowing. Unfortunately one of her sons, her youngest son, falls ill. She has all sorts of adventures meeting crows and cats and rats and owls and different creatures to get him medicine at first and then when that medicine works she's delighted but unfortunately it still means that he's not going to be able to move come the springtime. So her next adventure is about going to meet the rats of Nim because she is told by a wise owl that they will be able to help her and figure out something to do where she doesn't have to move her sickly child. It's a middle grade so it's told in a very plain simple way but there are still some really scary moments. Also some scary implications like when she meets the owl she knows that the owl eats mice and so she's really trepidatious to go. She's willing to do whatever she has to to help her child but it's very nerve-wracking and anxiety provoking when she meets the owl. It's also very dark in a lot of places in that they talk about her youngest son Timothy potentially dying and it's talked about in a very open way that like if they have to move before he recovers he's gonna die. The idea of doing what's best for the rest of her family and leaving Timothy to die is talked about as a possibility. Timothy himself sometimes talks about them leaving him and him accepting his potential death. It's really 
like heavy subject matter I feel like in the guise of a very simple cute in a lot of respects story. So I'm just at the part where she has met the rats. She's discovering some of their secrets. The rats are known to be very secretive. They're known to be very industrious but the true extent of their industrious nature is unknown to mostly anyone. Luckily she has allies that she has met throughout the way. The old mouse that gave her medication for Timothy knows the rats and it turns out that her family has a deeper connection to the rats than she thought. I'm learning about the rats plan and I'm learning more about the rats. I'm not reading this super fast despite it being a middle grade. It's one of those books that when I'm reading it I really like it and it goes really fast. Of course it has huge font and huge margins. It's made for middle grade readers but when I'm not reading it I don't particularly want to pick it up. I think that's a little bit more the reading mood that I'm in than the book itself or a lot more really because I'm just in a weird transition period. I didn't particularly want to pick this up but I definitely want wanted to read it by the end of July and I only have a few days before August so I want to make sure to finish this before the new prompt comes out but also I'm just like in a weird reading mood anyway like basically all I want to read is thrillers but every thriller I try to pick up is not quite right. I have read quite a few books this month already though so maybe it's just reading burnout or maybe it's just being indecisive but as a mood reader it's always hard to pick up a book that you are not feeling 100%. I will be super happy to finish this. I am very much enjoying it. It's got a lot to sink your imagination into. Also I really love anything that has to do with very small things or very large things. For instance The Borrowers which is another middle grade book series that I really love is kind of the same where very small people are using tools and things that they find and the same goes for Mrs. Frisbee. You know she is a mouse and her house is made in a cinder block. All the kind of interesting things, the things that the rats use and how they adapt large things to their small little bodies which I just love that imagery. Think dollhouses, think miniatures, like all that stuff is so appealing to me so reading about that is always so fun. I will be finishing this soon so I will probably finish it and then come back to you if anything really crazy happens in the second half that I want to discuss. Maybe I will come back before then but I would probably just come back to you when I'm done with The Rats of Nam. August and I have finished The Secret of Nim or Mrs. Frisbee and the Rats of Nim which was my July pick for TBR Spin. And first and foremost I have to say this is an amazing book, a classic. Kids should be reading this today. It was perfectly formed in so many ways. It gives you enough description and descriptive passages that you can see and imagine what Mrs. Frisbee and the rats are going through, what their environment is like, what's happening. It had thrilling moments. It had adventure. It had tragic moments. It had scary moments where you didn't know who to trust. It had intrigue. Like just really amazing. Although it had lots of descriptive passages it did also leave you to be able to imagine a wider world, to be um, able to imagine all these creatures coming together and the world in which they live. All of those like wonderful things. So I didn't remember at all what this book was about. I didn't remember that there were so many thrilling 
amazing moments. I didn't remember the connection between the rats and Mrs. Frisbee. I didn't remember whether the rats were good guys or bad guys. And I was pleasantly surprised at every turn. But I think the most surprising thing about this is like how sophisticated it is, especially for a middle grade or younger than middle grade story. There's, you know, talk of animal testing. There's deaths that happen, like multiple deaths and deaths of potential characters that you really like happen in this book. There's friendship and combined survival going on, you know, the potential of children being left without their parents. There's heroics. There's so many adult things in this book, but it is so perfectly formed for a middle grader, like definitely comes up with a lot of questions, a lot of discussions that you could have from this book, even to this day. It definitely felt dated, but it felt relevant enough that you could be having conversations with your children about this book now. I was surprised at how many adult themes were there, but that again, that they were done in a way that children could go on imagining that you could hope for things, but there were like a lot of discussions to be had. Discussions around death, discussions around incarceration, like all sorts of heavy things that you could talk about, but without being a overly depressing or sad book. There were definitely depressing moments. There's definitely sad moments. There would be things that a child could hold on to and be sad or be upset about. Discussions to be had about that, but also then there were things to be hopeful about and there were things to be excited about. There were things to imagine what was going to happen in the lives of these animals beyond the ending of this book. And I thought this book was a series. I thought that Robert C. O'Brien had wrote more of these. I thought there were two or three more books. But actually, he didn't write any more books. His daughter wrote a few books, which take place, it seems like, much later, and have more to do with, like, humans, which isn't as interesting to me as this original book. So I don't think I would be reading any more of the sequels of this book, especially because they weren't written by Robert C. O'Brien. Also wrote Z for Zachariah. I've never read, I don't know that much about, but I know that it is a children's book, but it is dealing with heavy topics of like nuclear war and things like that. So just seems like Robert C. O'Brien was like an interesting dude. Super glad I read it. Very much enjoyed it. The last like chapter or two I read while listening to it on audio as well and that was really good experience. It was an audio narration from like the 90s but it held up really well. Highly recommend. If you like middle grades, if you like books that have discussions that can be had with children, Yes, but I will say that it is August 5th and it took me so long to read this book. I am just not, I'm just, I'm a mood reader and I'm not in the mood for middle grade. I don't particularly like to read middle grade. I have read one or two other middle grade this year. One that I flew through, one that I DNF'd. It's a mixed bag whether middle grade and YA is going to like grab my attention. I'm never quite sure. And this one, although while I was reading it, I really enjoyed it. Once I put it down, I just did not want to pick it back up. It was not the thing that I like wanted to be reading, which is why it was on TBR Spin so that I could get to it knowing that I wanted to read it to remember what it was about, but I knew I was never going to pick it up on my own. So it was perfect for TBR Spin. Now it's August 5th and I haven't watched the next TBR Spin video, so we should definitely do that and pick our next TBR Spin book. Let me grab my stack. So I still have Florida, which was a secondary pick in one of the spins. I haven't read that. It's a collection of short stories. I will read this eventually. I have Ruby Fruit Jungle by Rita Mae Brown, The Bean Trees by Barbara Kingsolver, Severance by Ling Ma, As You Wish by Carrie Elwes, and The Adventures of Almina Al Sarafi by Shannon Chakaborty. It is freshly read book's turn to do the spin. Let's see what we get. That's interesting because Sarah's saying that the book that she read for July was The Joy Luck Club, which I read for the TBR spin earlier this year. Okay, so a fairly straightforward spin. This is a book that has an author that is different from you, race, gender, or sexuality. We can definitely rule out Ruby for Jungle, Jungle which is a white queer woman. That's me. We can probably rule out Barbara Kingsolver because she is a white woman. She is from South Africa, so that is very different than me, but 
will say there's too many similarities. And we can rule out the Avengers of Amina al Sarafi because although Shannon Chakraborty seems like an Indian or Pakistani woman, she's actually a white woman who has, I think, an Indian husband. So that leaves us with Severance by Ling Ma and As You Wish by Carrie Elwes. I'm gonna go with the one that's the most different from me, the author that's the most different from me, which would be Carrie Elwes because he is a straight man. I think he's straight. This book is pretty short. It is only without the notes and everything under 250 pages. There are a lot of like little asides and stuff and there is uh, pictures in the center of the Princess Bride and working on that. So the full title of this book is As You Wish Inconceivable Tales from the Making of the Princess Bride by Carrie Elwes with Joe Layden. Forward by Rob Reiner. I totally misread that prompt. It said a book featuring a main character who is different from you, race, gender, sexuality. So I still picked the right book. I'm still going to be reading as you wish. This is just all about making that movie. It's one of the things that I was thinking about with The Secret of Nim is that I would like to go back and watch this movie because I only remember it being like terrifying as a child. For a long time The Princess Bride was definitely one of my all-time favorite movies so this could be an interesting pairing. Maybe we'll watch some childhood favorites and we'll definitely read As You Wish in August. It's never too late. You can pick five books and and use the prompt from August or you can pick four books and join us in September. You could pick 12 books and go right back to the first video starting in January. Let me know if you have read any good books for this challenge so far. Let me know what you got for August. Thanks so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!